going to demo for you today is something really simple. Keep it low stakes. So sometimes I work just on little pieces of paper. These could become cards. These could become bookmarks. Um, for me, they became pages of my book. It's basically how I get started when I do any of the artwork that ends up in my books. I'm usually working with acrylic ink, acrylic paint. This is acrylic gouache. That basically just means it's water-based. It's not really stinky. It's not like non-toxic kids paint, but it tends to be um, fairly innocuous compared to oil paints or something like that. So I get some water and I have a couple of these dishes. You could use a plate or a bowl. Basically, my motto, motto is keep it simple and you don't have to have expensive special stuff. I then I take a brush. This is one of the types of brushes I use. Here's another kind. It doesn't really matter. I would just say experiment and see what brushes you like. Once again, they don't have to be fancy or expensive. And um, I have a pencil. I like this kind of pencil because I like the white um, erasers, but other erasers work well too. So again, I encourage you to experiment and just find the materials that you like. So today I'm just going to um, take you along on a, like, a sort of a, just a color doodling journey. When I'm working with paints, I tend to put something down underneath, you know, so that if I have a spill or something, nothing gets ruined. And blue, red, and yellow, as you may know, pretty much covers most of what colors you can make. Sometimes I throw in a little white or a little special color like a, like a yellow ochre because it kind of takes a green in a different direction. But what I like to do, I just, and, I, and for paper, it's really, again, um, this is kind of a thick paper someone gave me. I don't even know where it's really from. Bristol board is, is nice. That's a kind of pad of paper you can get at a um, any kind of an art store. But you could just use some, if it's thin paper and you're working with water, it can get wrinkly. When I begin, I just, I just play. And I think the biggest challenge of uh, mine has been over the years to just allow myself to be curious about what's happening rather than to think it's going to become something specific. So, okay, I just made that. I, that's kind of interesting to me. So I don't really know where this is going and I don't have a plan, but maybe I want to kind of do something with some orange so I can mix a little bit of the yellow with a little bit of the red. And if things get too wet, I can always just take a little bit of paper towel and dab. Uh, doesn't have to be paper towel, could be toilet paper, Kleenex, something absorbent. So this is a slightly different color. And then when I was younger, I would just kind of follow a pattern. So here, I'm just saying, well, why don't I put a dot at the end of the longer stroke I just made? in a slightly different color. It doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just kind of exploring what that's like. And if I want to work with this color but make it lighter, I just dip it in water, uh, take a little bit of the water out of the brush, and then that's just a slightly lighter version. So I'm just doing the same thing again. Again, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing around to see what happens. Maybe I kind of go, I don't know what this is. I, I don't really know that I like it. Now, why that is, I couldn't tell you. I'm just going by feel. So it's kind of an intuitive process, and I think it's important, whether you're a parent or a kid, to give yourself a lot of space, not to have to know what it is, or, or have, you know, oh, that's beautiful, honey. You know, like, it's just, it's just exploring. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be something. It doesn't have to, um, you know, follow anybody else's uh, idea. 
it's just play. That's basically, so that's what, when I was saying earlier, my favorite thing is that, you know, people, the younger you are, the easier it is to do this. And the older you get, it can become more challenging. So this is good practice for us to just let ourselves be in beginner's mind and say, huh, look at that. I'd say the biggest value in a in something like this is in not having it be about you these marks have their own kind of existence they don't have to say anything about the person that made them what i find is when there's a sense that the artist is enjoying themselves and what they're doing you can feel it in the final whatever they're making it just comes through so keep it light and just let yourself play now here's another thing if you're really like in an adventurous mood you could do something like take a really thick other color and just mess it up and say what happens if i do something messy right in the middle of this whole thing um so you might have a lot of feelings come up you might think wow this is really ugly i'm not a good artist you might think i liked it before and i want it back well the good news is you can just make another one you can make another drawing so again it doesn't really matter i think that's that's the big message uh you know nobody's gonna burst into flames because one of your drawings became muddy or dark or something. So here, I'm just gonna take this in another direction just because I feel like it. I'm gonna do that. Now I'm working with a kind of paper that's kind of tearing apart a little bit. But you know what? I find that kind of interesting. So what I might do as an artist is, you know, let this dry, put it on my wall and write about it. What do I like about it? What don't I like about it? Now, remember that there's no right answer about what you like about it or what you don't like about it. It's personal to you. What I personally like looking at this now, this isn't later and it's not on my wall, but what I personally like is that these colors are very bright against the blue. So I find that kind of interesting. And I might use that later in some other way I say well what did I do okay I put down the red and I put a little yellow and then a, a few minutes later I put a thick blue and then I I wiped it down with a with a wet paper towel that's how I did that so it can become like a technique but I could also work into this with a pencil and you'll see in some of my drawings that I often do this and again, I'm kind of making patterns. I'm just saying, oh, you know, every one, every other one of these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna outline. All right, no reason for it. I just did it. How about I take this and I circle it? I'll do this one too. Again, no real reason. Maybe I'll just make a couple circles. So, once again, this thing is abstract. It doesn't have to be a thing. You might end up turning it into a thing. Maybe it's a lady's dress or something. Maybe it's um, it's a meteor falling to earth. You can do that if you want, but what I enjoy myself is just letting it be itself without a story, an idea. It can just be open. That can be very uncomfortable sometimes for some people. It's one reason people don't really like um, abstract art sometimes but it is um it is allowable it is possible to just leave it like that i like to forget about thinking when i do this so those are a couple of little examples i hope you enjoyed this demo